Hello everyone. Welcome to the 50th video by Pale Blue Thoughts. It's been a roller coaster ride for us ever since our first video was released on 21st July 2020 amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Although we were testing waters, we never wanted this to end up as just a time pass. Our aim right from the start has been to abide by the constitution which states that it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to develop the scientific temper humanism the spirit of enquiry and reform we have not achieved huge success but we are not planning to give up we will continue to spread the truth and leave a legacy as we are confident about the truth in our topics we have looked at many subjects such as immunity boosters astrology vastu electromagnetic radiation msg yoga covid vaccines and snake venoms we have tried to touch varied topics from moon landing conspiracies murphy's law evolution of man astronomy to chickens and chicken eggs we have received some very good comments from some of our regular viewers many of whom have started to look forward to our videos we would like to thank everyone who has watched our videos every subscriber every non subscriber everyone who has liked our videos shared our videos disliked our videos and took time to post comments we are deeply indebted to each one of you and your invaluable feedback we hope you would continue to show the same support as we continue our journey although we personally don't give importance to the milestones and we think that it is the journey and not the destination that is important we really thought a lot about the topic for a 50th video and then the idea came to me while i was watching the road safety world series featuring legends from the cricket field why not make a video on the science behind accidents what causes accidents on road and how can science help in reducing the accidents and we're not going to talk about the usual examples like keep your eyes on the road don't drink and drive etc we are going to present how and why accidents happen with the principles of science so we dedicate this life saving video to all our viewers and encourage each one of you to watch till the end but before we start Let us start with the statistics first. In 2019, 4.5 lakh accidents happened on the roads of India. 1.5 lakh people lost their lives and 4.5 lakhs were injured. Please see the statistics of accidents in India from 2015 to 2019. This literally means that there are approximately 50 accidents happening every hour on Indian roads and 17 people die every hour on our roads. When there were 1.5 lakh road deaths in India in 2019 in the same year UK as a country reported just 1870 road deaths same year Australia had reported 1195 road accident deaths among all states in India Tamil Nadu records the highest road collisions in India and its capital Chennai has more collisions than any other city in India the city has also had the dubious distinction of having one of the highest rates of death from road accidents globally from as far back as the 1960s the state also topped the list of most collisions in a state for 18 years from 2002 to 2020 in new delhi the capital of india the frequency of traffic collisions is 40 times higher than the rate in london out of all road accidents in india more than 40% of the casualties are associated with motorcycles and trucks the most collision prone time on indian roads is during the afternoon and the evening according to road safety experts the actual number of casualties may be higher than what is documented as many traffic collisions go unreported the globe status report on road safety published by the who identified the major causes of traffic collisions as driving over the speed limit driving under the influence and not using helmets and seat belts failure to maintain lane or yield to oncoming traffic or not looking when turning are prime causes of collisions on our national highways the report noted users of motorcycles 
and motor powered three wheelers or auto rickshaws constitute the second largest group of traffic collision deaths. According to a report of two experts published in the International Journal of Research in Management and Technology, driving under the influence of alcohol accounts for 82% of collision fatalities in India. So after seeing all these reports and analysis, we can easily conclude that the most dangerous place in our country is our own roads. The sad part is that after a detailed analysis of all these accidents, many reports concluded that majority of these accidents were preventable. And that is where our video becomes relevant. Now that you have a background image of what we plan to discuss, let us look at this from the point of view of science and we will use physics. You'll be wondering what has physics got to do with deaths and road accidents? Shouldn't this guy be talking about road safety rules or the medical science related to these accidents? The reason for this will become obvious by the end of this vlog series. We are going to talk about very basic physics which we all would have learned in our school days. There is no rocket science here. Let us start with a simple thought experiment. Imagine that there is a very heavy box of furniture kept on the floor. Now a person is trying to push this. The weight of the box, the person's strength etc. will obviously decide what happens. But we all know that if the box is too heavy, a slight push would not move it an inch. We have all by-hearted Newton's first law of motion in school that if a body is at rest or moving at a constant speed in a straight line, it will remain at rest or keep moving in a straight line at a constant speed unless it is acted upon by an external unbalanced force. Now as per this law, the box should move, but it won't. But as students, we have been taught not to question our teachers. So we don't ask questions like, I tried moving the box, but it doesn't move. No, that is not to be asked in class. We just need to believe what is being taught. But this class is different. Here you can ask. Go on, ask yourself, why doesn't it move? Does this mean that Newton's first law is wrong? No. The catch word here is the application of an unbalanced external force. So something else is intervening with the force that we are applying. What could it be? It is because there is another force in action here which is restricting, controlling or balancing this push or external force applied by the person on the box. This force is called friction. Where does this friction apply or work upon? It is between the base of the box and the surface of the floor. Friction always works between two or more surfaces. So when you apply force on an object, the friction always acts opposite to the applied force. When it is applied on a static object, it is called as static friction. When we increase the external force, the friction also increases. But static friction stops working after a certain point. Once the strength of the external force crosses a certain limit, friction stops working and the object or box starts to move. Please don't think that friction has lost the battle and has retreated. Even when the object is moving, the friction is not completely nil but still acts between the moving object and the surface. But since it is now applied on a moving object, it is now called kinetic friction. So what prevents a static object from moving is static friction and what prevents the motion of an object in motion is kinetic friction. You can see in the graph here how the strength of the friction changes with force applied. Static friction is the tor here. It is stronger than kinetic friction. That is why it is difficult to initially move an object but once it starts moving it is easier to move it as kinetic friction is weaker. Friction always occurs between two surfaces. We know that it is very difficult to push a table with a rubber bush on its legs on a tiled floor. And that is also the primary reason why we keep a rubber bush beneath the table legs. So as per the behavior of the surfaces, the strength of friction varies. The digit or number which decides this is called the coefficient of friction. That is, 
coefficient of friction is defined as the ratio of the force required to move two sliding surfaces over each other and the force holding them together. Don't get tensed with so many physics terminologies. It is just the amount of friction that is at work between two surfaces. When we try to open a bottle cap, if the coefficient of friction between our finger and the cap is less, then we would not be able to open it and the fingers will just slip around the cap. So what we do is to increase the coefficient of friction between our finger and the cap. Hence we use another material like a cloth or rubber sheet and then try to open the bottle. What happens here is that the coefficient of friction between the cloth and the cap and the friction between our hands and the cloth increases and the cap pops open. That is why we keep a rubber stopper to prevent a door from slamming shut. Rubber offers a stronger friction and prevents the door from moving freely. So if you want to move that box now, just slide a blanket or towel and now pull the towel. It slides easily. You learn something new each day through science. Now there is a third type of friction as well which is called the rolling friction. The force resisting the motion of a rolling body on a surface is known as a rolling friction. An interesting point is that rolling friction is another variety of static friction and when compared to both the other frictions, rolling friction is the weakest. So the biggie here is static friction, next comes the kinetic friction and taking the last position is rolling friction. The idea that the coefficient of rolling friction is very weak is what helped early humans to invent the wheel, although they didn't know the science behind it at that time. So in order to move an object easily, you just need to place an object which can roll easily underneath it. See the diagram of this wheel. So when a force acts upon the wheel and makes it move, there is a point on the wheel as shown in the diagram which is in contact with the road or the surface that doesn't move. This point which doesn't move and the surface holding onto it is what causes the wheel to rotate. If this point also moves then we say that the wheel is skidding or slipping. So for a vehicle to move without skidding or slipping there has to be static friction working on the point of the wheel which is in contact with the road surface. This static friction is what makes the wheel roll and move without skidding. We call it rolling without slipping. So the point here is that if and only if there is a stronger static friction holding on to one point of the wheel can an object roll without slipping. You can now relate this to what happens when a car or a bike is driven over a wet muddy road. We all would have experienced this. You try to move the vehicle tire but the vehicle and the tire doesn't move but slips and circles at the same place. That is because the friction of a wet surface is lesser and the strength of static friction decreases. For a rolling friction to work, the static friction has to be strong. Please keep these three types of friction in mind for the rest of the video. Now let us get into the vehicle. I know you all have been waiting for this for long. For a vehicle to move, the tire must rotate or roll on the surface. If it slips on the surface, then it won't move ahead with the full efficiency. All the kinetic energy released from the engine to move the shaft and tires of the vehicle goes in vain as the tire slips and circles at the same place. We have already seen that you need static friction for a tire to roll and the vehicle to move. There are benefits as well as disadvantages for static friction. The benefit is that it helps the tire to rotate on road. But the disadvantage is that since static friction is very strong, the tires get damaged over a period of time. We might think the tires are rolling or rotating. So how can the tires get worn down? You don't see any rubbing action. Now you know the answer. As the tire rolls, the stronger static friction acts on the tires, causing it to be rubbed on the road, wearing it down. There is another purpose of static friction. If you need to turn your vehicle, the vehicle's maneuverability is also defined by static friction. Without static friction, 
you cannot turn your vehicle so our iron man static friction is the main man behind your ability to drive your car without it you cannot move the car or turn the car now let us stop this moving vehicle we know that we use the brakes to stop the vehicle be it any vehicle actually brakes do not stop the vehicle it stops the wheels this application of brakes on tires alone doesn't decide whether the vehicle will stop or not why we need to understand another scientific concept here any moving object has its own energy which we call as kinetic energy we have learned this in school and some of you may remember this as e is equals to half mv square which means that the kinetic energy depends on the mass of the moving object and the velocity at which it is moving just one more knowledge from school that you may have forgotten we usually use speed for measuring how fast an object is going science uses velocity although they are conventionally used one for the other the only difference is that velocity has a direction added to it for us speed and velocity are the same so coming back to our formula e is equal to half mv square if a car is moving at a speed of 60 km per hour and you know the weight of the car put this in the formula and you will get the kinetic energy of this car note that as the velocity of the car increases its kinetic energy also increases and it just doesn't increase linearly it increases as the square of the velocity so the energy difference between a car traveling at 50 meter per second and 60 meter per second is measured as the square of 50 and 60 that is 2500 and 3600 respectively as the speed increases the kinetic energy of the vehicle too increases exponentially remember another law that you learned in school the law of conservation of energy energy cannot be created nor destroyed it has to be converted from one form to another or transferred so in order to lower the energy the energy has to be transferred somewhere so when you are in a moving car there is a considerable amount of energy which includes your weight plus the weight of the vehicle multiplied by the square of the velocity or speed at which it is moving now the mass is not going to change so if you need to reduce this energy the only way is to make the v in the formula that is velocity zero when the velocity becomes zero the kinetic energy also becomes zero so if your car is at a high speed or velocity it has a high kinetic energy and you can't suddenly stop this energy with a sudden application of the brakes the only force which can stop this vehicle apart from the application of brakes on tires is the same thing that we discussed in detail earlier frictional force just because the tires stop rotating will not ensure that the complete vehicle stops this huge kinetic energy with it also has to be distributed or transferred somewhere for this we will need to briefly look at another formula here which is e is equals to f times d this is the equation connecting energy and force so by this equation if you need to discharge an energy e with an opposing force f then you would need to apply the force for a distance equivalent to d so in simple terms in order to stop your car which is moving with a kinetic energy there is one and only one force that can possibly act on it that is friction again and it is not kinetic friction or rolling friction it has to be our captain america static friction but remember friction is not a force that cannot be overcome remember our thought experiment again when you try to push the box at one point the force that you applied was able to overcome the frictional force so static friction has a limit the same is applicable in the static friction between your tires and your road it cannot be increased beyond a certain limit so what is going to increase let us look at the equation again you are trying to bring the energy to zero and you cannot increase f beyond a certain limit so what would increase d or distance we will introduce another terminology to understand this better breaking distance 
This is usually taught when you are learning to drive a car in developed countries, but I am not sure if many of you would have even heard of this. When you are moving in a vehicle, be it any vehicle, when you apply the brakes, the vehicle would have to travel some distance before it comes to a stop, even if the tires are stationary, because this kinetic energy has to be transferred somewhere. Braking distance refers to the distance a vehicle will travel from the point when its brakes are fully applied to when it comes to a complete stop. So contrary to what people say, you cannot stop a vehicle the instant you apply your brakes. Your braking distance depends on how much kinetic energy you are carrying along with you as you are moving. As your speed increases, the kinetic energy increases by the square of the speed as we saw earlier. This means that if you double the speed at which you are traveling, the distance that you would be required to travel before you can come to a stop increases four times. The stage where your tires stop rolling and yet your vehicle is carried forward because of the kinetic energy of the vehicle is called as skidding or more specifically locked wheel skidding. The tires will no longer roll but it will start to slip along the road. Remember what we told about maneuverability earlier? It was static friction which helped us maneuver our vehicle. When the vehicle starts to slip, there is no more static friction. There is only kinetic friction which is smaller than static friction. And you no longer have control over the vehicle. The vehicle will skid in the same direction no matter which way the steering wheel is turned. You may have heard many people flaunt while driving. Don't worry, the steering is in Bai's hands. Hmm, the steering may be in Bai's hands, but the vehicle is most certainly not. For all of you drivers out there, remember this. Once your vehicle has started to slip, there is no point turning the steering. You cannot regain control of your vehicle no matter what you do and you can blame it on the absence of static friction. This type of skid is usually caused by braking too hard at a high rate of speed and locking the wheels. So the next time you see any vehicle parked upside down or crashed on the outer edge of a big curve, you understand that the driver did not know about this physics principle. He or she didn't understand braking distance. Has it been a long-winded lecture? Too many concepts that your mind has started to skid? We will pause here as it has already been a long video. However, we have only scratched the surface of what we want to cover. So I will be back soon with the next part of this video where we will look further into the scientific aspects behind why accidents occur. Thank you for watching our 50th video and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now so that you don't miss our next videos. For now, it's bye-bye from Pale Blue Thoughts and may the force of static friction be with you.